Hey guys, Dead Center Magic here, time for part two, and let me just say it right now, it will be a miracle if all of these come out actually prior to the pre-release. I fully expected to cover just white in one video, and then pretty much all the other colors in the next video because white was so overpowered, but, well, blue's up next, and uh, looks like they're no slouch either, which uh, is awesome because honestly, blue-white's my favorite color combo. And uh, I kind of skimmed the other colors, so I have no idea how good they are. But hey, for now, let's cover blue. So first, one with the wind, enchant creature. Enchant creature has plus two, plus two, and has flying. Four, two. So, I mean, that's pretty damn nice. The only downfall is, okay, they hit it with removal spell, they get a little two for one special because they eliminate both. But the upside is, you take something that was kind of good early game and you make it infinitely better. I mean, plus two attack and plus two toughness and flying. You can block with it, you can hit with it continuously, it's almost definitely bare minimum three damage. I mean, you could put this on a double striker, I mean, the, the possibilities are endless, so I like it. It's not absolutely perfect, but for two, I really like it. Next up, shocker, it's opt. Uh, scry one, then draw a card? Sure, I'll play with a 39 card deck. And trust me, you'll have mana coming out your ears. It's not a finely tuned deck that you're putting together. You'll have one spare blue mana in most cases. Now, when would I not play this card? If there's nothing worth fetching in my deck. If it's just generic blah, there's no bombs, there's no combos. It's just creatures in removal. That's it. Well, then why put this in? But if there is like a really good mythic or a couple really good cards that you want to get to, this is how you do it. And trust me, during the Eldritch Moon pre-release when I had Gisela, yeah, the game she came out, I won. 100% of the time. I literally did a draw removal scry Gisela deck. That's it. Next up, oh my gosh, Spell Swindle. It's a rare, so I wouldn't hold your breath, but oh my gosh. This is game ending right here. This is like the end of the world in spell form. Hell, I might even build this in standard. So for five as an instant, which is kind of high. I mean, five's reasonable. You ain't going to do it on turn two, though. But you, you also wouldn't want to. Counter target spell. Any spell whatsoever. Doesn't matter what type. Counter any spell. Create X colorless treasure artifact tokens where X is that spell's converted mana cost. And then you can ditch them all for mana whenever you want. They lost their spell. You won a bunch of mana ramp. You just won the game. And trust me, by the time you have five mana, that's when you would want to be countering whatever the hell they got left in their hand. Next up, Siren Storm Tamer. Um, it's a flying 1-1 one, one for one. I mean, that's just, hey, damage every single turn. It comes out in turn one. You're probably going to get four or five good swings off it. And like I said with the last video, if they waste a removal spell on this, it's not technically wasted, but it kind of is because it's a one cost. Who cares? So it's annoying enough that they have to stop it. But if they do stop it, they wasted the removal spell. That, folks, is called a lightning rod. Now, also, um, you can pay one blue, sacrifice it, and counter target spell or ability that targets you or a creature you control. So, just about any spell. So they're trying to screw with you, make you do something, discard a card, target you, target a creature, blow it up, whatever, pss, boom, gone. So in addition to this just being awesome, it's like a long-term, I don't know, counter spell almost. Absolutely amazing. I hope I pull it. Uh, next up, Windstrider. Uh, it is a 5 cost and it's a 3-3 flyer, so yeah, it's damage, but that's a little much. But it does have flash. So this is what I would call like an ambush level, uh, well, removal spell, not really kill spell. I mean, there's removal like the card murder. It destroys a creature at the end. And then there's removal like, oh, plus 4, plus 4, and indestructible till end of turn. Okay, so you cast that, and as long as you have pretty much a creature on the field, they're dead. So it's an ambush block, it is combat specific, but it will remove something. Well this, I mean, they swing away and they think that you're tapped out, they think you don't have a flyer, whatever, you drop this in, chump block, and there you go. So you might lose it, you might not, I mean, if they're swinging with like a, I don't know, 1-3, I guess it would survive. But it can't take out like a 5-5, five, five. so it's not that good, but still, 3 damage in the air is kind of good. Flash Ambush is kind of good, 5 cost is kind of not good, but you add them up together and it's an alright card. Next up, Stormfleet Aerialist. Um, love the artwork on this, by the way. Uh, it's a flying 1-2 and it has Raid. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it will get a 1-1 one, one counter on it if you attacked with a creature this turn. So that would be a 2-3 flyer for 2 in blue. I mean, that is like really good. 
Now, for two, okay, you could cast it if you didn't have raid, I guess. Um, I mean, a 1-2 in the air can do some stuff. It's just quite a bit worse. So you'd almost have to have raid to make this worthwhile. But it's not like you can't cast it. You know, you could throw it out in case of an emergency. Yeah, not like Illusory Angel. My god, is that card cursed. Uh, next up, Deep Root Waters. Uh, it's an enchantment. It costs three. Whenever you cast a Merfolk spell, create a 1-1 one, one blue Merfolk creature token with Hexproof. Holy crap, Hexproof is annoying. Merfolks are going to be a disease in standard. I mean, it, it's just a nightmare to play against these. Everything's unblockable, and in addition, you can't blow it up. So, 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 so annoying. Anyway, if you have enough Merfolks, um, you might as well cast this because, hey, two for one special, and they quite literally cannot blow them up. So they'll be like chump blocking for days. Um, doesn't really help with the fact that your Merfolk may or may not be unblockable. Um, then we're getting into like constructed territory. I think at the pre-release you can't really guarantee that. But it would be nice to take the pressure off or to have a threat of, you know, quadruple blocking something and killing it. Next up, River's Rebuke. It does cost six and it's a sorcery. I don't love that. But return all non-land permanent target player controls to their owner's hand. Wait a minute. An asymmetric board wipe for six. The last true asymmetric board wipe that I've ever seen in standard was in Garuk's Wake, and I believe that was like M14. Yeah, that spell cost nine. This is going to be like probably a seven or eight dollar card once standard rolls out. I mean, it's an asymmetric freaking board wipe. I mean, oh, they can recast it. So what? Not all of it. And still, they're a turn or two be behind at that point. Oh, you got tokens? Bye-bye. Oh, you got really important treasure artifact tokens? Bye-bye. Creatures with counters on them? Haha, <laughs> bye. This, if you get this off, you win. Just, that's it. It's that simple. Next up, one so obvious I didn't even want to put it on the damn list, but uh, yeah, Jace Cutting Castaway. Oh, look, it's a three loyalty planeswalker. You think that might be good? Yeah. He doesn't do anything really worthwhile, honestly. I mean, illusions would be kind of cool. It's ongoing creature, you know, like creation without cards, I guess you would say. That's always valuable, thus the Merfolk enchantment. So, um, yeah, and I guess cloning him is kind of dumb, and I don't know. He's just not that great, uh, and there's no reason he's like 15 bucks. I think they're completely missing it on that one. But hey, whatever, three cost. I mean, people will put it in Commander or something. Uh, next up, Chart, of course. Uh, this card's just absolutely insane. Like, even in general, not just pre-release. Okay, get this. Draw two cards, then discard a card, unless you attacked with a creature this turn. So it's a sorcery, so it's not another anticipate. You still have to do it on your turn and whatever, but casting anticipate at your opponent's end step is very overrated, especially if you don't actually have, like, some kind of instant speed anything to do during their turn otherwise you're just like oh i'm casting at the latest possible point because i'm a pro player didn't make a damn ounce of difference might as well have done it during your turn so not a big deal but um if you so much as attacked with the creature this turn draw two cards for two mana that's one mana per card honestly you really don't see that very much next up storm sculptor pretty cool uh, artwork there by the way uh, it's a merfolk, so I automatically hate it, but uh, it does cost four, and it's a three-two. It can't be blocked, so three damage every single turn, and there's nothing they can do about it. Four-cost creature, if they had to burn a removal spell, okay, they, they're probably getting some value there, but I mean, it's not absolutely end-all good. Uh, by the way, when he enters the battlefield, return a creature you control to its owner's hand. Um, I don't believe that's part of the casting cost, but the problem is it's an after-effect, so if there is nothing else there, you would have to bounce him himself. That's a little bit of a problem. I mean, if, if they just blew apart your whole board state and then you're trying to summon him, you can't. But still, three damage unblockable. I mean, people, three damage unblockable. That will win you the game right there. I mean, it's pretty damn good. And the crazy thing is, this is a common. So this is going to be a bit of a menace at the pre-release. Next up, Depths of Desire, another great common. Uh, it's a three-cost instant. Return target creature to its owner's hand and then create a treasure. Uh, that's nice because it's like automatic single-use ramp. Um, and also, you know, maybe their creature has counters on it. Eh, at the pre-release, maybe not. But, you know, worst-case scenario, you just kind of burned an entire turn for them because, you know, some five-cost creature just went back to hand and they got to burn their entire next turn's mana uh, to bring it back out. And then we go through summoning sickness again and all that. So it's not true removal, but the added treasure is really nice. That makes it, you know, worthwhile for sure. Next up, River Sneak. Oh, look, it can't be blocked. I hate Merfolk. I hate everything about Merfolk. 
you know they're going to print more Merfolk in Rivals of Ixalan. You guys know that, right? It's going to get worse. However bad it already looks, it's going to get worse. And the general consensus is the Merfolk deck will have universal hexproof, universal control and counter spells, universal removal, and universal unblock ability. So you can't block them, you can't kill them, you can't target them. Basically, you'll just sit there and lose, or you'll play one of the very, very narrow cards that can stop them. So, unfortunately, that does translate to the pre-release a little bit. I mean, for two, one damage unblockable, it's not a big deal. But, whenever another Merfolk enters the battlefield under your control, it gets plus one, plus one. So, if you have a lot of Merfolk, I would just dump them all into a deck. Hey, why not? And, uh, yeah, I mean, two damage every turn instead of one. Maybe. Or at least somewhere close to it. I mean, this, even if it did like 10 damage in a game, that's half their life total single-handedly for two mana. That's pretty damn good. I just, I still, I can't get over the fact that Wizards is going to ruin Standard once again with this Merfolk crap. And I have a feeling it's going to be like Red Rush. It's, go it's so stoppable. I mean, you just run sweeps. You just run Bantu's last. I mean, there you go. Bye bye Merfolk, untargeted, yay, but then it's like, it, you have to run that, it, it's not an option. So once again, instead of coming up with any deck you want, it's going to be, well, don't forget, you have to stop Merfolk. And honestly, Dinosaurs within Rage, they're practically Merfolk, so you're going to have to run Sweepers, Board Wipes, that kind of stuff to even stand a chance. And unfortunately, I hate really, really narrow, caged-in standards. I like wide-open, do-whatever-the-hell-you-want standards, like what we have right now. But nope, Wizards doesn't agree. They want an absolute shootout with hard-to-stop creatures. Hey, speaking of hard-to-stop creatures, this one's actually not a merfolk, which is why you have to pay to make it not be blockable. <laughs> but uh, Daring Saboteur, that artwork looks like some famous actor person, and I just cannot figure out who the hell it is. Also, I can't determine the gender of that character, and I guarantee you some douchebag SJW artist did that on purpose. Uh, maybe they're gender fluid and you gotta refer to them as Z. Yeah, right after hell freezes over. Anyway, it's a 2-1 for 2. That's not bad for blue. I mean, you gotta set your standards a little bit lower for blue attack power. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card if you do discard a card. So that's a bit of a downside, but this would be perfect if you're trying to mow through your deck. Yes, I say mow instead of mo. It's a valid pronunciation in Wisconsin. Anyway, if you've got a good card and you want to get to it, this will get you there while also dealing damage. Um, now, the thing is, you may draw a card. You could just skip it. If you're like, my whole deck's crap, what do I need another card for? It's just another card in the graveyard. <laughs> Especially if you're top decking, because then really, what's the point? Um, yeah, there you go. And then if you, you know, have nothing better to do with your mana and you want to keep piling on the two, 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 twos, pay three. Ta-da! So, yeah, another card that'll be very, very annoying if you get it out on turn two and they'll have to probably waste a removal spell on it. And I do mean waste because this is not worth a removal spell. I mean, it is if you want to not lose the game, but there's also, like, you know, five fives. And the Gender Fluid Pirate is uh, the last in the blue noteworthy card list. A little bit less than white, but still, I mean, there's a lot there. There's uh, 14, actually. I think white had 21, so, I mean, white is the color. I mean, you'd have to either just literally not pull enough white cards at all, or just pull all the garbage white stuff. Otherwise, I think everybody's going to be going white. I think that's the hot color. But like I said, haven't even looked at the other colors seriously yet. So we'll see. So definitely uh, hit that subscribe button if you don't want to miss the rest of them. Or just come back and see my channel manually. That works too. There are people I've been watching for like three months and I just can't be bothered to subscribe. I'm a man. I fear commitment. But I am committed to making the rest of these videos. So I'll see you guys next video.